Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, lesson 14, we'll be taking a look at a couple of refactoring patterns for architecture, migration versus adaptation. Let's take a look at migration first. When we look at the migration refactoring pattern, essentially what this is, the, is the replacement of old components with new ones through a migration over time. For example, let's assume that we're going to keep component one there on the top, C1. But we're either replatforming or migrating C2. So the way this migration pattern works is that effectively we're replacing C2 with a new component or a new system. And so what we do is we put C3 out there and we point component one over to C3 through some switching logic. Now, in this case, C3 is not doing anything, but watch what happens. As we start to slowly migrate functionality iteratively over time, we start pointing component one, C1 up there, over to C3 for that new functionality. And over time, we continue to migrate functionality from C2 over to C3, hence the name migration, until we're finally done. At this point, C1 is completely pointing over to C3 with its new functionality, and we can now remove that component. And as a matter of fact, if we analyze this kind of refactoring pattern, you can see, first of all, it's really easy to roll back changes because we have the old functionality existing already still in component 2, C2 there. So if we do have an error, we can simply switch C1 back over there. And because of that, there's a lot less risk with this migration pattern or with this refactoring pattern called migration. However, there's also a lot more cost associated with it because for a time, while we keep C2, the functionality in that component 2, and also C3, we for a time potentially had some dual maintenance of each of those. But the one negative about the migration pattern, although it is much less overall risk and is easier to back changes, the problem is that it requires switching logic in the components that are talking to C2 and C3. And so, in other words, if we have a high level of afferent coupling in C2, the component we're replacing there, then this isn't a good choice because too many other components are impacted for every single release. Let's take a look at another type of migration pattern, and that is adaptation. Now, adaptation, let's say we still have C1, which we're keeping, but we're adapting C2. We're going to rewrite C2. So this is a refactoring of existing components by essentially adapting them to new functionality. So we do this in place. <clears throat> so now we're refactoring. C2 or replacing some of its code. And so what we have here is iteration one, we're re replacing a portion of C2. Iteration two, iteration three, until we're finally done with our refactoring effort. So notice this does not involve other components. And as a matter of fact, if we analyze this, we find out that this is really not a replacement, essentially, but a refactoring of C2 in place. And while, while it's a little bit cheaper because we're not doing dual maintenance, the problem is it is harder to roll back changes. In other words, if we have an error, that means we have to roll back the original functionality of C2, which is much more disruptive than the migration pattern. However, the advantage of the adaptation at that there's no changes to any of the calling components. In other words, if we have a high level of afferent coupling, in other words, who's talking to me, then this is a good choice because none of those components even know the refactoring is happening. So really between the choices of migration versus adaptation have to do with risk, with cost, and also the coupling levels that we have. If we're replatforming, then necessarily we'll generally have to do a migration because it's hard to replace an existing component with a new platform or language. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 14, Refactoring Patterns, just to give you a hint of, of some of the differences between two ways of refactoring systems and components. Uh, please stay tuned uh, every Monday for Software Architecture Monday, a new lesson every Monday. Thank you so much.